Sarah. Good afternoon. And uh, good afternoon. Good afternoon. I'm waiting on my co-chairs and ranking chairs. That's okay. Hi. I'm ready to go. Okay, cool. Just wanted to welcome everyone and also say happy Valentine's Day. And uh, this announce that this meeting will be live streamed on YouTube and is being recorded. Please have your mic muted if you're not speaking. Please do not use the chat function on Zoom as it is a public meeting. Please raise your hand on Zoom by clicking reactions and then raise hand to be recognized. When voting, the clerk must be able to see your face as you speak. When the clerk calls your name, please state your full name so the Zoom highlights your face and then casts your vote. If you're in person, please speak with your microphone at all times, including when making a seconding, making or seconding a motion so the clerk can identify you. So I just would like to ask if my co-chair has any comments. Thank you very much, Madam Co-Chair. Welcome to everyone uh, and happy Valentine's Day. I would also just want to say very quickly, um, I was moved to say something here today. I hadn't planned on it, so forgive me if I stumble. Earlier today, um, I had the opportunity to meet with a group of fourth graders and um, a young boy and two of his friends pulled me aside as their representative and let me know that they were very concerned about school shootings a nine-year-old. So I say this just so um, I can just remind everybody within earshot, anyone who's watching on TV or sitting uh, here on this committee, um, let's just try to take some time to remind the kids in our lives that um, the adults are here to keep them safe and that this is a problem that we are working on uh, and that they should always listen to adults and trust what they have to say. But it really just broke my heart that a nine-year-old decided to come to their elected representative and mention this. So maybe just check in on the kids once in a while. That's all. Thank you. Thank you. And um, our ranking members, do you have anything you'd like to say? Uh, just happy Valentine's Day to everyone. And I hope that everybody shows all their loved ones and people around them a little extra love today. Thank you. Okay, so we will begin with concepts to raise. Can I have a motion to raise items one, three, four, and five on so the moved. agenda? Thank you. Voice vote. Sorry, questions? Sorry, apologize. Uh, please go ahead, Representative Dauphiné. Would you kindly read each one? And um, I know that there was a couple of questions, if you don't mind. Absolutely not. You no know, maybe problem. explain each concept or, or bill and then um, okay. we'll move forward. Thank you. Okay. An act concerning the reduction of food waste in schools. This is a way of just making sure that food is going into either being in a shared table or going into food receptacles, which will then be composted. The second one concerning eating disorder awareness, and we're gonna not do that one on this. A three, an act concerning youth camp safety advisory council, giving the option to, um, giving the oversight to Office of Early Childhood to put a uh, name people onto the youth camp safety advisory council. And I'm gonna to turn to my co-chair in case there's something else there that you wanna add. Thank you, Madam Chair. Yes, this uh, Youth Camp Safety Advisory Council is already in existence. It's just not in statute. And what this would do is put it in statute with its current makeup while also adding um, private camps to be to have a spokesperson on that. Thank you, Madam Chair. An act establishing the affirmative defense to certain misdemeanors concerning the supervision of children is about um, change in the statute. So it allows for a, um, I'm not gonna be able to say this properly. Do you have that? Yeah, please. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair, because we've been doing this a couple of times uh, here on this committee. It's the free range parenting bill, which essentially uh, makes it so that a, it is based on a child's um, ability 
uh, at a maturity level to determine whether or not they can be left home alone or stray farther from their parents than uh, would currently be considered under the law. Back to you, Madam Chair. Thank you. And then finally, an act authorizing the Commissioner of Early Childhood to enter into certain contracts, and that's just to provide parity across um, other organizations, other departments. <laughs> Representative Mastro Francesco. Thank you very much. I just had a question on number five. That was an act of um, authorizing the Commissioner of Early Childhood to enter into certain contracts. So does this have to do with personal service agreements? that other agencies are utilizing, that they have the yes, ability it does. to do that? Can you just kind of give me an um, ex explanation? What is exactly a personal service agreement? Over to my <laughs> co-chair. <laughs> thank you. Uh, thank you, Representative Master Francesco. So um, uh, I am not sure what the exact definition is, if that's defined in statute. So um, pointing to absolutely everything would be a little bit difficult right now. However, um, uh, these contracts could possibly be um, utilizing someone's expertise outside of um, the realm of the current um, commissioner uh, in order to bring them in to have things done rather quickly uh, in order to get services to the children who need it. I will say that remember that this is simply concepts to raise and all of this information will be fleshed out during the committee uh, and public hearing process. Bye. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Um, Thank you very much. And I am aware of that. Is this an agency bill or a proposal or concept? Uh, this is not. This is not. Okay. Thank you. Um, I'm I'm wondering if there's this one also was a proposal in the past. I have, wasn't on this committee in the past, so I'm not sure if this was ever entertained here before. Uh, this was not entertained in the past uh, on this committee, but to the best of my knowledge, it absolutely was entertained in other committees because um, other state departments are able to utilize that, right? So this is just bringing um, the Office of Early Childhood into the fold. However, this was something that was done during COVID, um, and now it just makes sense to put it into statute um, as it is, it, it is a practice in other places here in the state. Thank you for the clarification. I have no further questions. Thank you. Okay. Any other questions? And seeing none, I will ask for a voice vote. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions. Okay, thank you very much. All right. Moving to then um, number two on the concepts to raise, an act concerning eating disorder awareness and school cafeterias. So moved. Second. Thank you. And any questions? Senator Seminara. Uh, thank you, Ms. Chair. Yes, I do have a question. Um, how did this even come about? Like, do, is this a, a really big issue that I, I'm just curious? I believe this was a constituent request. I'm going to turn it over to my co-chair. Thank you very much, Madam Co-Chair. Actually, it, it was a constituent request uh, and not just from one constituent. I've heard from multiple constituents uh, that during the time when free meals uh, were offered. It was a one meal. Um, and if a student wanted a second meal, they had to pay for that. Uh, and so um, many different times, and not just in the same school, these are constituents in different schools, uh, the cafeteria workers would say something along the lines of, um, are you sure you want to eat that? Is this, um, you know, are, no, you have to pay for it. And they had really great intentions of just letting the children know that the second meal had to be paid for. Unfortunately, though, we have seen such a dramatic rise uh, in disordered eating throughout the country that now what's happening is these um cafeteria workers are unbeknownst to them reinforcing disordered eating. And so simply what this bill would seek to do is to provide handouts um, uh, every year to um, cafeteria workers uh, to explain the best ways to communicate these things with children in an age appropriate manner uh, that does not 
actually a disordered eating. Um, this has not only happened, uh, we sometimes we really think about um, strictly uh, high school and middle school level, um, but it's also something that we've been seeing happening um, on the elementary level. And while we are in no way saying um, that disordered eating is on the rise because of um, how cafeteria workers are interacting with children. We are simply saying that we can give them best practices so that they could support the mental health of all children, even in the cafeteria. Through you, Madam Chair. Thank you. Additional questions? I, I guess it's just more of an additional comment. I, I, I see the value in educating cafeteria workers. I just don't think we need to make a law about it. I think that we can, uh, this can be part of the process I, in when one is hired, and but I just don't see why we would need to make this into a law at this point. I, I question whether this is so widespread and such a huge issue that why we would need to go to this length. Thank you, Madam Co-Chair. Thank you, Madam Co-Chair. Uh, actually, I understand that. And um, the goal is not always to make so many laws, but really uh, what the goal here is to ensure that the information that is given is developed by professionals who um, understand disordered eating and how to talk to young ones. So uh, we're not saying you have to do this and go out and do it on your own, what would actually be made is all of the wording put together um, and that information will then um, be required to be given uh, to cafeteria workers to ensure that the information that they're given um, is really based on uh, good practices for those uh, who are familiar with disordered eating. Um, and I recognize that some people don't think that it's um, really pervasive. I will tell you uh, that it's way more pervasive than is known um, to the average individual. Disordered eating, like I said, has jumped um, not only in girls, but also in boys, especially uh, since the pandemic. And this committee for years has focused on quality mental health for children. And I think that this is just another ex important extension to that. Uh, and they're, given that we always write this legislation that the information can be given electronically, there should be no costs to the town to do so. Through you, Madam Chair. Thank you. And online, we have uh, Representative Wielander. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, I wanted just to jump in on this topic as and make a, a general comment. Um, this is also a concern that I have been seeing in my district and has been shared across, uh, I think, to people across the state. Um, and I would love to have this information shared not just with cafeteria workers, but to explore the possibility of how can we ensure that there is awareness of this concern um, within our school community. And so I, I would look forward to working with the, um, the chairs and the ranking members to, to see if we can expand this idea uh, because it is something, disordered eating is, as um, Representative Linehan said, on the rise. It is pervasive across um, all types of um, demographics. And it has been shown that uh, disordered eating is something that oftentimes is carried with that person for the rest of their lives. It is not something that is healed and then they move on from. It is something that affects the quality of the, their life, um, especially if it gets to a very serious or crisis point. Um, for the rest of their lives. So I think the more um, work we can do to bring awareness and have this conversation, the better. So I look forward to, to hearing all points and, and concerns um, on this. And I, I hope I can, we can do some good work for the kids in schools. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you, Representative Wielander. And yes, Representative Pizzuto. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, just uh, when I first saw this, I, I thought it was a medical condition eating disorder. And I think we're reaching in that we're trying to deal with a behavioral health issue with students and can't expect cafeteria workers to be the front line of defense against that. I have 19,000 students just in Waterbury, the tremendous amount of waste that goes on on a daily basis because they take things that they simply don't want to eat, but they put them on their tray, they throw those out. 
I don't think it might be good for composting, but I think that the bigger issue is one, I think the wording, it's, it's not a medical as much, oh, I guess behavioral health is a medical issue, but um, the school cafeteria, handing them a piece of paper and expecting them to read it, I think is not going to work. I think the uh, guidance counselors and things like that might, but um, I, I just think that uh, it, it's, it's mislabeled. And I think the depth of the problem requires more than, than a law on our part. Thank you. Thank you, Representative. Um, it's an interesting point about the whether it's behavioral health. I think what we're talking about here is awareness. When someone comes in to be a food service worker, to work with in the cafeteria, they don't necessarily have the kind of training and background that most people have when they're dealing with children. They're there to perform a service caringly, which they do, but also it's not usually something that we train them on. It is incredibly important. And I think that Representative Wielander spoke to this about the long-term effect on someone's life when they feel that they are being judged by their size, by their weight, whether they're too skinny, too heavy, quote unquote, too heavy, any of those things have a tremendous long-term effect. And so anything we can do in advance to circumvent that just through education is an enormous opportunity. And uh, I'd like to offer it to my co-chair. Thank you very much, Madam Co-Chair. Uh, Representative, I, I um, just want to kind of address what you had said, and I'm not sure if I heard you correctly, but from your comment, it sounded like you were thinking that these handouts um, and training and awareness would go to all the students in your district. That's actually not, um, this has little to do with training students. It's about um, the cafeteria workers knowing um, the best ways to communicate with children should there be disordered eating. So. Um, instead of saying, are you going to eat that? Are you going to eat all that? Is, you know, or that's not enough food on your plate. These are things um, that may trigger an eating disorder uh, or it may worsen one. So we're just talking about, um, you know, communicating. If they're concerned about a child getting a second meal, that would be would need to be paid for. There's ways that a, a cafeteria worker might say something like, um, that'll be no problem. I just need you to know that that will be an additional charge is, is much better for a child's mental health than you're really going to eat all that. I mean, this is just, and they, and it may be said, um, you know, just because that's who they are and they're not recognizing that there may be some mental health issues, but there really are. And I will just wrap up these comments, um, by saying, I do have someone in my district who uh, over the course of COVID took on an eating disorder uh, and is no longer in school because her entire system shut down and she was in the intensive care unit because she did not eat. This really is a problem. It really is a health issue and a mental health issue. And the Committee on Children has um, a history of putting forward children's mental health legislation. Uh, and I think that this is a natural extension to that through you. If, if, if I may just rebut, uh, um, when I ran UConn and Waterbury at five different unions there, and if I added something like that to a union contract, there'd be discussion and then there'd be pay differential. And in the schools, then the next thing would be litigation because they're saying, what qualifies this person? It used to be like your dental cheer site assistant was the secretary answering the phone, now holding your bite wing x-ray. This is the same type of thing. They're not trained to do that because we give them information. And if we do train them, it's a requirement. So I'm just putting out my two cents for a conversation. Thank you. And through you, Madam Chair, I look forward to continuing this conversation through the public hearing process, but this is not a vote on the bill. This is a vote for it to simply, uh, it's a concept to raise. There is no bill that is completely written right now. And any vote um, against that would be a vote against having this discussion in the public arena. Through you, Madam Chair. Thank you. Seeing, is there anyone else who would like to weigh in here? Okay, then, oh, excuse me, Represent Senator Seminara. Yes, thank you, Madam Chair. I, I just wanna add that 
I don't think anybody uh, at this table is disagreeing that there are, it, that um, eating disorders is on the rise and it's an issue and it's an issue that needs to be addressed. I think we just disagree on who should be addressing that. And I do not feel cafeteria workers are qualified to be addressing that. Thank you. Even under that. guidance of, of maybe mental health workers who have prepared the document. Thank you. So all of that being said, again, it is a concept that being is being raised. So it we are going to go to a vote. Is this a voice vote or are we? No, we're going to be doing a roll call vote. Motion has been made and seconded to vote to raise concept number two, an act concerning eating disorder awareness and school cafeterias. Senator Marr? Senator Marr votes yes. Representative Linehan? Representative Linehan votes yes. Representative Kitt? Representative Kitt votes yes. Senator Kushner? Representative Dauphine? Representative Dauphine votes no. Senator Seminara? Senator Seminara votes no. Senator Anwar? Representative Arnone? Representative Arnone votes yes. Representative Boyd? Representative Boyd, aye. Senator Cohen? Senator Cohen votes yes. Representative Comey? Representative Comey votes yes. Representative Hayes? Representative Hayes votes no. Representative Lanou? Representative Master Francesco? No. Representative Napoli? Representative Napoli votes yes. Representative Pizzuto? Representative Pizzuto votes no. Representative Roberts? Representative Sanchez? Representative Wielander? Representative Wielander votes yes. Thank you. Thank you. Votes are be open until four. Number four on the agenda, proposed bill to be drafted into committee. Proposed bill, uh, an act establishing a grief counseling program for children. May I have a motion? So moved. Second. Second. Discussion. Voice vote then? No to seeing no discussion. Let's hold a voice vote. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Okay, we're good. To the next meeting. We have a public hearing on Thursday, the 16th at 11 a.m. And thank you very much. We are in recess. We're in recess until uh, four o'clock. Yep.
Hi, Representative Hello. Yeah, I'm here. I'm sorry. Okay, so we just wrapped up, but we're holding votes open. So we had voice votes on all but number two. So that's an act concerning eating disorder awareness and school cafeterias. How would you like to cast your vote on that? Um, Rep. Roberts, no chance. Okay. All right. Thank you very much. Appreciate You're you. Thank welcome. you so much. You're welcome. Have a good day. All right. You too. All right. Bye bye.
Hi, Senator Omar. Hi. Sorry for being a little late. I was uh, in the public hearing in uh, environment. Uh, sorry. In, um, <laughs> we understand. So um, we had a voice vote on everything except for agenda item number two, which was a vote to raise uh, an act concerning eating disorder awareness at school cafeterias. How would you like to vote on that? Um, I will vote yes. Okay. All right. That says hi. <laughs> um, so you're all set then. Thank you very much. Okay. Thank you so much for, for waiting for that. Of course. Have a good day. Be well. Bye bye. Hi, Representative Sanchez. Hi, how are you? Good, how are you? Good. So the meeting's over that quick, huh? Yes, it was a pretty quick one today. So we had voice votes on everything except for agenda item number two, um, which was a vote to raise an act concerning eating disorder awareness in school cafeterias. Okay. How would you like to vote on that? Uh, number two? Yes, number two. Um, yes. Okay. All right, great. Thank you very much. You are all set. Oh, okay, thank you. Say thanks. Have a Bye -bye. good day. Bye. You too.
Representative Lanou. Good uh, good afternoon. How are you? Doing well. How are you? Uh, I'm hanging in there. All right. All right. Just give me one second. So we we had voice votes on everything except for uh, concept number two. So Emily, you're frozen. Emily, you froze after you said uh, you had voice votes. That's the last thing I got from uh, you. Okay, so we we had voice votes and everything except for agenda item number two, which is an act concerning eating disorder awareness in school cafeterias. Do you need any background okay. on that? There was some discussion today. Um, I do not. Um, okay. So I'm, I'm ready to go here. All right, how would you like to vote? On item number two, what yes. the bill you just said. I'm mm -hmm. going to vote no on that. Okay. All right. Thank you very much. So you are all set. And the other ones I'm all set on? Yep. Those were all voice votes today. Very good. Thanks, Emily. Okay. I'll see you Thursday. Great. Thanks. Be well. Have a good day. Take care. You too.